Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael Case. I'm the special teams coordinator for Riverside Poly High School. And on behalf of the Southern California Football Coaches Association, I want to thank you for attending our virtual clinic. Uh, we're very excited for our next speaker, Artie Allen. Coach Allen is the associate head coach, the offensive coordinator, and the quarterbacks coach at Chafee College. Uh, his topic for this session is going to be the inside zone RPO and decision making. Coach, thank you for your time whenever you're ready. Absolutely. Thank you, Michael. Uh, you know, thank you to everyone involved with the SoCal, you know, football coaches clinic. Um, Coach Rice, uh, who, who I was in contact with, uh, definitely appreciate the opportunity here. This is a, an awesome platform here. I've been able to tune in to uh, a few of the sessions here so far, and it's been great. A lot of good coaches um, and a lot of good sessions. So, so I'm going to go ahead and get going here, guys. Um, my name's Artie Allen, as uh, Michael let you guys know, uh, I'm the office coordinator and quarterback coach here at JP College. Um, you know, I've been here for off and on um, about seven years now. And so uh, I'm a former uh, JP student athlete myself. And so uh, there's a lot of pride, you know, that I have in, in, in where I work and, and uh, you know, we're in Rancho Cucamonga for those that are not, you know, too aware of us. I know a lot of us will be local here in Southern California, but those that are not, um, you know, we're, we're about an hour east of Los Angeles. And so, um, you know, at the end of the day, we're very, very local recruiting based school. And, uh, you know, we love to recruit the Inland Empire. We've done it for years and years and years um, as far as trying to do our best to get the best talent locally in the area. And so, uh, you know, if, if uh, you need a place for you guys to go, you know, send, send them on over to us. So. Uh, so I'll get going here. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about inside zone RPO from the quarterback standpoint. Um, you know, I'm going to hit on a little bit of uh, this, the decision making process that we go through with our quarterback and, and what we're looking to tell him, uh, you know, as, as we go through this. And so um, that's what we're going to touch on a little bit, a little bit of stats here. Um, one of the things that I'm you know, most proud of, we, we took over the offense in 2018. Um, and we we jumped significantly in a lot of different areas. Uh, but one of, the, one of the stats that I'm most proud of is the yards per completion and the rushing yards per attempt. I think those two areas tell more of a story on efficiency uh, within the offense as opposed to, you know, total number of stats and things of that nature. Um, there's other things that can get involved. But, uh, you know, we've, we've been able to, you know, really do a good job of, of getting the most out of each attempt that we have, whether it's a pass completion or whether it's a rushing attempt. And so those are things we're, we're very, very proud of. You know, along with leading the state uh, in points per game uh, last year and, and, and the year before being number three in the state, uh, those are things that, you know, we're, we're definitely proud of. And, you know, I'm a true believer in, you know, the foundation of what we do offensively really stems from what I'm gonna talk about today. And, and uh, you know, I think that really kind of drives us and uh, gets us to where we are in some of these other areas. Uh, I'm a true believer in having uh, mantras and, and having things to, to really live by uh, in regards to what you're doing on offense. And so for us, obviously as an offense, our job is to score points. That's the number one thing uh, that we're uh, to do, right? And so for us, we created an acronym here um, of things that are gonna allow us to do that on a regular basis. And the number one right there, is sacrificing, right? We talk to our players all the time about sacrificing, making sure that they understand that it's just not about you. And we're gonna ask you to do things that at times you may not be uh, excited about doing, but it's for, the benefit, it's for the benefit of everyone. And it's also for the benefit of yourself at the end of the day. Uh, being cerebral, that's the C, um, and making sure our players have a, a, a mindset to study the game and uh, not be a fan. You know, we talk about watching you know, NFL game and, and college games all the time. And how do you watch those games? Are you watching them uh, to see the highlights and the oohs and the ahs? Or are you watching those things to get something out of it, right? Can I identify that front? Can I identify that coverage? What concept are they running? Did the quarterback make the correct decision? Those are all the things we want our guys to think about as they're watching uh, a game, right? And then also, you know, making sure that they do their due diligence with the teams we're playing against. Onus, right? That word onus means responsibility. We talk about doing our one of 11, okay? That's real huge for us in regards to what we're doing on offense. Um, and then being relentless. 
that comes from physicality. That's, that's what really what we mean by talking about being relentless. We want relentless physicality. We want to play the game as physical as we can for as long as we can. And I think that's one thing that's, uh, you know, allowed us to be as successful as we have. Uh, we're currently on a 21 game winning streak. We won 21 games in a row. And some of those games, uh, in my belief, it was because we were relentless and we didn't, we didn't stop. We finished throughout the entire game and we kept coming and coming and coming. And, you know, teams don't want that. And the last thing there is uh, giving a maximum effort, right? And we always say effort is between you and you, right? And we're talking to our players. There's nothing we can do about it. We can't coach that. That's something that you've got to bring yourself, all right? So this is kind of what I'm going to get into today. Uh, we use this term super back. And for us, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an all-purpose back. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Um, and then we're going to get into our philosophy, which to me is, why we do what we do. Um, I'm gonna get into a few of the variations that we have in regards to zone. We have a lot of variations of zone because it is our bread and butter. It is what we do. Uh, we obviously have other concepts that we run in regards to the run game, but uh, you know, tight zone, inside zone uh, for us is that's king. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna talk about briefly about the quarterback decision-making and uh, what we're telling him to look at as we go through things. I have a few practice drills uh, that I'm going to touch on, um, and then we're going to finish up with some game film. All right. So for us, that super back, as we say, is really an all-around football player. Okay. This guy is a blocker. He's a receiver. He's an offensive lineman. He's a tight end. I mean, typically for us, it's a tight end fullback type build um, that we're looking for. Um, and really for us, six foot or above, the reason I say six foot is because we're going to do some things with him, you know, kind of getting down the middle of the field, um, you know, pop passes, seams, different things of that nature. And we want someone to, you know, kind of be visible in the quarterback's eye in regards to being able to get downfield and things of that nature. We talk about that weight being around 220 to 250, mainly because we're going to ask him to pretty much block anyone inside the run box. Um, and so, you know, you're gonna need to bring something with you a little bit when, when you're doing those things, okay? And then natural physicality. Um, again, we'll teach you the, the fundamentals. We'll teach you the step. We'll teach you the blocking technique, where you need to fit. But at the end of the day, you just have to be someone that's not scared, right? You gotta be someone that wants to put your head in there and get nasty a little bit, okay? And then you gotta have the ability to, to run some routes and catch some passes. Doesn't mean you have to be a 4-4 guy. It doesn't mean you have to be a supreme route runner. You just have to have, you know, some skills a little bit right, that we can work with um, because you need to be a threat, all right? Again, if you guys have questions, I know you guys are type them in the chat, so feel free to shoot them in there, all right? So a little bit about our philosophy. Um, this is why we do what we do. Number one, we want to establish physicality, right? We just talked about that a little bit earlier as far as what our, what our mindset is and what our players' mindset is um, going, going into a game, right? We wanna establish that physicality, but we also wanna be able to attack vertical and horizontal space, all right? So we wanna start everything we do with running the football first, all right? And then at the same time, if teams wanna leave you know, space on the perimeter or they wanna leave vertical space, we are gonna be uh, very, very uh, in attack mode in regards to taking advantage of those areas that they're leaving. Uh, we have simple rules for our players, but we want it to be complex for the defense. What we mean by that is, specifically up front, we want to do everything we can to let our offensive line play fast, to allow them to, you know, really understand what they're doing and really not have a whole lot of confusion up front. But we want to dress things up on the perimeter and make things nice in regards to different formations, motions, uh, you know, shifts, things of that nature, uh, just to, you know, give us different looks take advantage of uh, what we see on film from the defenses, uh, not being able to line up against certain uh, formations and things of that nature. We wanna protect the quarterback on the RPOs, all right? So with that super back, it allows us to get one more person in the box. A lot of times, whether we're in 10 or 11 personnel, we're going to get a six man box. And so in that regard, we wanna protect the quarterback by being able to block six guys in that run box and, and allowing that quarterback that extra time to to make that decision on that RPO. Uh, we want to have answers for post-snap changes in the defense. 
uh, we give the quarterback what we call structured freedom, uh, which means for us that we're going to allow him, and that's, you know, that's a little bit down here, but we're going to allow him, um, you know, the freedom to check out of plays, maybe change, uh, you know, a, a perimeter option that we have on the run tag and things of that nature. And, uh, you know, we want to make the defense pay immediately for things that they're doing that are changing uh, or that are changing their structure. OK, uh, we want to have customizable R RPO concepts. So we're not a team that just says, hey, when we run this, this is the RPO. Right. We're going to have pretty much whatever's within our menu, um, as we call it, is going to be on the table for our RPOs. Right. And so each game's different. Each defensive structure is different. Each coverage, you know, is different. And then with, within those coverages, sometimes teams play them differently. And so in that regard, we have to be able to have, you know, everything on the table, like I said, to take advantage of things. We want to make sure all six eligible players have the option to get the ball. Um, we talked about that structure freedom. And then we want wrinkles, which we'll talk about as we go through this, um, that mirror our base schemes. There's going to be specific defensive actions that take away what we're trying to do. And a lot of times we have those answers pre-built into what we're doing, uh, into the game plan. And so we want to be able to, uh, you know, have those wrinkles at the right times to take advantage of the defense changing things. Okay. So these will be the variations that we're kind of, we're going to discuss and go through for today. Um, again, we probably have about 11 different variations of zone that we'll use. Um, for the most part, the offensive line is, is, is not doing a whole lot. They're doing just a few things. Okay. They're going to, you know, zone read it, which you see right up here. Um, that's our normal zone read for us right so um you know everyone's zoning to the right in this uh picture here and on the back side there you know we're reading the back side defensive end there's conflict defenders to each side which i'll discuss in more detail as we talked about as we talk about the quarterback decision making uh but at the end of the day um that's that zone read all right so that's the first option that we have the first uh variation that we'll have the next one here is a split zone uh type concept here where now, uh, like I was saying before, protecting the quarterback by blocking all six box defenders, now we're zoning out. For the offensive line, they've really done nothing different. They're still doing the same thing, but we're taking that, that super back, that Y that we have right there to uh, you know split zone that defensive end, okay? That blocking technique that we're really looking for is to try to stay as tight as we can to the offensive line uh, as we're coming down that line. We want to have low pad levels, same foot, same shoulder. Um, and, you know, we, we really are looking for our inside peck to his inside peck and then just running our feet uh, through that block. We're not going to overcoach it. The main purposes or the main uh, things that we want to get accomplished is that low pad level, same foot, same shoulder, and making sure we finish bringing our hips and running our feet. Down here, you're going to see uh, our zone left now. And so what we're going to do on that on the backside is we're going to lock insert okay so everyone you know has has ran you know lock on the back side where you're reading that that might backer that we're in that we're inserting on right there instead of reading him we're going to go ahead and uh insert there we have lock as well if you want to call that um but right now uh it's, you know similar to an iso type look where we're getting a you know a, a full back or a tight end defender iso up on a linebacker okay but again nothing's really changed here uh, from what the quarterback is really identifying. Uh, we're still blocking six guys in the box and, uh, you know, we're reading the conflict defenders to each side, okay? Down here below, you're gonna see, uh, and we'll just call this zone cutoff uh, for the sake of this, okay? So what we're doing there is, again, we're still blocking that backside defensive end. We're just doing it in a different way. So now everyone's zoning uh, pretty much is the, probably the easiest way to describe that is everyone's just zoning their gap, right? So right now that backside, why that tight end is responsible for the C gap, okay? And so these are the four variations that we're going to go through. All right. Now, as we talk about the quarterback's processing and the things that we want him to do, I think it's really important for your quarterback not to be confused. We have to make sure that he understands what we're looking for. We have to make sure that he understands the things that he's going to go through every single play. And honestly, this even, you know, kind of, carries over with our past concepts of what we're trying to do as well, okay? And we call it BPR. And the reason we do this is for the quarterback to make sound decisions pre-snap and post-snap 
based on reading the defensive structure. What we mean by the B in BPR is box. So the first thing we want to do is identify the box. How many people do we have to block? How many do they have committed to the run? That's the number one thing. So as we're identifying that, we're going to have either uh, a neutral advantage, which means that we have enough to block them all. The defense will have a plus one man advantage, which means that they have one more guy than us, or in rare occasions, we'll have a plus one man advantage, which you know really never happens. But if that happens, we're obviously going to be running the football. Now, if we have a neutral uh, man advantage, typically we want to run the ball. But there are games where, you know, if the perimeter, as we get into the, 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 uh, the next part of the BPR there, the perimeter, if both are even, you know, it really depends on personnel at that point, right? How do we feel about that team going into that game? Do we feel like they're, you know, they're better up front? Or do we feel like, uh, you know, we could take advantage of them on a perimeter? So as we're identifying the perimeter, what we're looking at, again, all you got to do is count. If your quarterback has the ability to count, then he has a, the ability to do this, okay? And what it is is how many skill players do we have to each side? How many do they have 10 yards or below on the perimeter, okay? And then the last thing right there is the roof. And what we're talking about with the roof is are they giving us one high, two high, or no high, okay? And then any man uh, or rotation indicators, okay? So if we're identifying, um, you know, who might be that extra fitter, that extra person that comes into the box, um, you know, some of the rotation indicators may give us an idea of, of uh, you know, what's going to happen there. Um, if we're getting the no high shell, uh, a lot of times that, that'll that give us the the, uh, the signal to go ahead and maybe check out of it, get into our best pass protection and get into our best man beater, okay? So as we uh, kind of dive more into the quarterback decision-making, uh, one of the main things that we want to focus on is understanding that we have two sides to the run. We have the backside and we have the front side, okay? On the front side of the run, we call that the grass, okay? So um, on the back side of the run, we call it the key. Typically, the way we call a play-in is we're going to give the quarterback the key. So you know, right here, we're in uh, you know, three by one. We call this tray. So we'll say tray with the, with the sting, right? That, that sting means that we have the Y uh, pretty much right there, okay? So that tells us um, that we're in three by one uh, with the tight end in a wing position, okay? And we're running zone left and we're running zone cutoff, which means that we have how many guys in the box to block? We have six. How many do they have in this picture? They have six, so things are even, all right? So now what the quarterback is looking at is to each side of the play, where is the extra defender? Good defenses are gonna find a way to disguise that extra fitter and get him in there late. So the whole cat and mouse game here is for the quarterback to understand how to identify that guy. Where is he going to be at? Okay, they're typically not going to add two guys to the run box because that's going to leave him, you know, a little, uh, you know, stranded out there on the perimeter too much. But a lot of times, what they'll do is they'll try to get one guy in there. Okay, so pre-snap, the quarterback has the option to throw to either side. He can throw the grass or the key pre-snap based on what the defense does to us. Okay. And then after that, uh, once he decides to mesh with that running back, his eyes are only on the back side, or they could be only on the front side, depending on what the call is, okay? And so again, we can do front side RPO, we can do back side RPO, but he will not read both post snap, okay? Once he makes a pre-snap decision to mesh with that running back, at that point, his eyes goes to one sole conflict defender. All right. So I'll jump into a couple of drills here. Uh, this first drill here, to me, is one of the most important drills that we do. Uh, the reason I say that is um, I'm a huge uh, visualization uh, scenario type of coach. I want these guys to, at all times, visualize what we're going to do and think about what we're going to do and create those scenarios in their head. And so within this drill, every Every time we come out for a practice, we're going to have a script, okay? And within that script, we're going to go through that script multiple times. We're going to go through it in this drill right here, script drill. We're going to go through it uh, as a shell with the perimeter players, which I'll get into as we go. And then we'll go through it together as a team. So um, in this drill, what we're doing is we're signaling to the quarterbacks. 
So you'll see every quarterback here has their eyes on me. If they don't have their eyes on me, then immediately we're stopping the drill to get that fixed. But that won't happen with the quarterback. Typically, they're on point with those things, okay? So I'm signaling to them, or maybe I'll have someone else signal, depending on the day, okay? They are going to intake the signal. They're going to run through the play by themselves, okay? So if there's a motion, they're going to send the motion. If there's a, you know, a drop, they're going to take the drop. If there's a mesh, they're going to mesh it, all right? After the play's done, what they're going to do is they're going to tell me what decision they made. Prior to this, they already have a front and a coverage that I've given them. So they've already envisioned that front and coverage. They know what they're, what they're getting and seeing, and so now they're going to visualize through it. Okay, so I'm signaling here. This is an example of actually a pass play for them. All right, they get the signal. Quarterback's up. He's ready to go. If there's a motion, he sends the motion, which he just did there. He takes a snap. He goes through what he did. Okay, now the play's done. He, my question to him is, what'd you do? He tells me, okay, I threw, and I'll give you just a, you know, a zone example. I threw the grass. Why'd you throw the grass? Uh, the conflict defender, uh, which was the boundary safety to that side, he was tight to the box. We had an off corner. All right, next, next guy up. And we go through this multiple times so that these guys get an understanding before we even jump into going against you know, doing this, you know, as a team drill or doing this as a, you know, group drill, they're going to go through this on their own. Okay. And so each quarterback is getting mental reps, even as they're not in right here on the side as well. Next drill uh, is a mesh drill that we do with the quarterbacks only. And on this one, what we're going to be doing is we're going to have a conflict defender. So you'll see right here, conflict defender on this one. This is an example of zone read. Okay. And so we have a backside defensive end. We self-service each other in this drill. Um, this is me standing here as the key throw. So you could just imagine that we're, you know, we're just throwing a now screen uh, right there. We are assuming that the grass is off. So we're already in this drill specifically. We're assuming that the grass is off. Now, each of these drills can have multiple variations and levels to them, okay? Uh, for this one specifically, we're starting off with just the grass being a, a non-option here. And so what you're going to see is, uh, based on uh, how this conflict defender plays the run box, he's either going to pre-snap, decide to throw that, or he's going to mesh with the back and then read uh, this defensive end. So the fundamentals on this for the quarterback is, after you catch the snap, we want to do what we call clear, which basically means as he's getting his base together, we always talk about having a strong foundation below. Uh, we want our weight on the insteps of our feet. We want to do what we call getting our glutes or getting your hips, right? Which means that we want to have a strong foundation with the strongest muscles in our body, which is our glutes and our hips. And so at that point, we want to use that as, uh, you know, the foundation to, to, to get generate power and, you know, what we call ground rotational force to get the ball out of our hands. Um, but he's going to clear to allow the running back his space. And then he's going to go ahead and restabilize, uh, get his back foot in the ground quickly, and then get the ball out of his hands. You see that one again? All right. Next one is we're going to include the backs. So as you notice, we're doing, there's no drill that we're going to do just to, for the sake of the drill. We're not gonna do mesh just to do mesh. We're gonna do mesh with a decision in it, a distraction in it, some type of pressure, right? DDP, we call it. Decision, distraction, and pressure within every drill that we're gonna do. And so we're not just gonna go through drops when we do pass. We're gonna make sure that there's a decision to make on every drill that we do. So as we're working Indy on our own, the running backs are working the fundamentals that they need in order to understand this play. The receivers are working their fundamentals right now during this time as we're hooking up with the backs. And so within the practice plan, I try to do the best that I can to move the quarterbacks around to everyone so that I give everyone else indie time as well, okay? Um, and so this one here, we're gonna mesh with the, with the running back. What you don't see is there's a quarterback that's behind us back there somewhere that is a conflict defender 
and another quarterback standing where a route break would be. It could be a slant. It could be a hitch. It could be a quick out. It doesn't matter. Um, and we create all the different scenarios. So the quarterback, as he takes this snap, his eyes are on that conflict defender. And so as we're going through this mesh, he also has a decision to make on every play. Okay. Here's the next one. Same thing. He's going to pull this one because he's going to get the decision to throw. Bam, balls out. What I don't like on this one is the quarterback's back leg swinging around. I'd like him to stabilize that back leg a little bit longer, um, you know, and do what we call sudden start, sudden stop, which means he initiates the throw with explosiveness and he has a sudden stop with his torso as he's throwing that ball as well. All right. Now we're going to include the wideouts. Okay. Same thing. We're still going through the same type of things, but now the running backs get to have their indie. So we self service each other as the running backs and now the receivers get to run the route and we get to work the timing with them as far as making those decisions on this one it was just strictly timing we didn't add a read in there until uh you know about one or two minutes after this but again quarterback catch the snap put the ball behind what i mean by that is seat the ball back right we want to go ahead and put it back into the running back as you see here and then we're going to go ahead and ride it out. We're going to flip our hips to restabilize, right? Get that back foot in the ground, get the front foot down quickly, and the ball's gone. All right, last one. All right, here we go. Last drill, perimeter. Now we're including everything together, okay? So this is a sequence of drills that we do to install these plays. Uh, now what we're doing is we got that super back tight end in there. Um, you know, they're surf servicing each other right there with the bag. Um, we have a conflict defender. Quarterbacks are always the conflict defenders. All right. We have receivers self servicing each other on blocks and things of that nature. All right. And so everyone knows where they're supposed to be. We coach this drill up uh, before we even get out there. So now we're working that split zone block. You can see right there with the tight end. Right here, we're working a, uh, a now screen. We're blocking most dangerous. And I think we have a slant up top here. All right, so that's a handoff read, ball's gone. All right, last one. Same thing. Mesh. Now will we get conflict defenders a little nosy, right? And I love the quarterbacks to do this because it allows us to have the quarterbacks know the action. The quarterbacks are the ones that know the actions of these players. And so they get to experience it. They get to go through it, a different type of learning for them. And uh, it also allows us to get the drill started very quickly um, because they know where they're supposed to be. All right. So let's go ahead and get into some game film. We're gonna start off with the zone read here, okay? So everything you see, most of, I think everything you'll see here is be 10 personnel, all right? So we're gonna start off in two by two, all right? Uh, I think we're gonna get a safety rotation. It looks like this guy's getting ready to rotate down. Um, you know, we have a, we push this right here with the offensive line, which means we're gonna go ahead and block that Sam linebacker. We're reading the backside end and our conflict defender is that guy right there. We're running a now screen right here. We're going to block most dangerous. I think we have double slant here for the grass. All right. Quarterback felt like this guy was too tight to the box. We out leveraged him. Throw it out to number two. And we're gone. We could have blocked it a little bit better right there with our X. Right. But we still able to get something out of it. See the tight shot here. You can see the quarterback catch, clear, flip your hips. He's a lefty, so it's got a, he's got it. That's the hard. We call it the hard way, right? We got the easy way. If he was throwing it to his to his right there, uh, throwing to his left here is the hard way. Got to flip your hips. And he's got to get it out. Okay. Here's another one. Now we're three by one. We start with the two high shell, um, but what's gonna happen is we're gonna get this guy to come. We're gonna get a safety rotation. 
as we count the numbers, we have one, two, three guys here, right? They have two guys below 10 yards, right? So for us right now, what's going to happen is if he comes, it doesn't matter. They still only have two guys there. So for us, that's a throw for the quarterback. That's a pre-snap decision to throw the football, okay? We teach these guys, the wideouts, to come to balance early, right? We want them to chop their feet early to, to give us an opportunity to make the block. It doesn't have to be a kill shot. We want to get a body on a body. We don't need these guys trying to, you know, go full speed and run guys over. We want to come to balance, get a body on a body, and we go. Can't believe he didn't get in the end zone on that one. See this one again? Quarterback sees it, clear, ball out. We practice this throw a million times, okay? This throw is really, really important to us. We call it a layup. This should be a layup, right? Which means we should never miss. That's, that's like a handoff. And the consistency of that guy being in the same place every time is really important. Here's an example of us throwing the grass, okay? So we have a quick motion right here with our back. We're getting ready to run a quick uh, out right here by number one as the grass. And I think we still have key three right here to the field, okay? Quarterback felt like this safety was, you know, getting a little tight to the box. And so he decided to throw the grass right there to the X. See that one again? Again, pre-snap decision, good job by the quarterback clearing, which basically tells the running back that the ball's coming out. All right, now we're gonna include motion, okay? So again, we'll do this multiple ways. Uh, for us right now, as we count, how many guys do they have in the box, right? One, two, three, four, five, right? Conflict, conflict. We have five to block, okay? So now what's gonna happen is on the perimeter, we have two, they have two. If we motion and they don't move, throw it. Right now, if we motion and they don't move, throw the ball, all right? So we get a little movement, but what ends up happening is they just replace one guy with another. So right now, he comes, he rotates down, it doesn't matter. We still have enough over there. Throw the key. See the quarterback again, he's got a clear. That little slight movement that he does right here just allows him to clear and really avoids, you know, ball on the ground, uh, you know, any kind of mesh issues and things of that nature. That's really key to what the quarterback's doing here. Last last one here was zone read, right? Motion, no movement, ball out. So obviously as we're, as we're going through this, your receivers have to be guys that block. It is a priority, okay? That these guys are, 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 are they don't have to be, uh, like I said, they don't have to be kill shots, man. You know, they cut every now and then. I didn't love it all the time. You know, I gave them that freedom as long as it worked. But at the end of the day, get a body on a body, right? I don't care. Sometimes it's a stalemate. But if it's a stalemate at five yards deep, we won. All right. Now we're going to get into the zone split RPO, okay? So, again, now we have the ability to block all five guys in the box or all six guys in the box, I should say. And now for the quarterback, he can truly RPO read a conflict defender. And he doesn't have to necessarily get the ball out as quickly as he was doing there with those other concepts because he can now ride and decide with what he wants to do, okay? So on this one here, we are in a 21 type look. So we got a tight end, we got a fullback, right? We have our X and we have our Z. Now, for us, this was 12 personnel because those were our two best players in those areas. Um, this year, we have a couple of guys that we like as true fullbacks. 
and we'll utilize those guys in those areas as well. But this year, we, we had two tight ends that were just good players. And so when we wanted to get in 21 type looks, it ended up being 12 for us. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, they can all, that's why we call them super backs, because they can do it all. Okay. So we're getting ready to run split zone strong. So we're running zone right. And we're going to take this guy and he's going to kick out the backside. Now it's a little muddy on this one. I remember this play. It's not as clean as a block as, as we'd like on this, on this kick out, but we're reading the conflict defender, which, which is right there. Okay. We're going to run a hitch, I believe here, and we might just be blocking here, right? At times the quarterback just gives this guy the option to block. So you see the look, bam. A lot of times our quarterback will just do that little flash fake in there a little bit just to kind of assure himself that the defense is doing what he, what he thinks they're doing. And then also to entice them a bit um, to do what they want to do, right? Bam, ball out. You make one guy miss, you get in the end zone. All right, see that one again. All right, see the tie shot. Again, not a clean block right there. You know, we kind of we get a hat on a hat, but it's not as it's not as nice as we like. It's an odd front. They do a lot of movement. So sometimes that gets a little muddy in there when that happens. But that's the reason I love zone, quite honestly, guys. You know, we have pin pull. You know, we have power. We have counter. Those are plays that we run. But, you know, all those together are like, you know, 30% of our offense. You know, we, we're a 70% zone football team for these reasons. Uh, when we play against teams that like to do a lot of movement, we, you know, it may not be the prettiest, but we still can get it done. All right, so here's another example. We are now three by one, that first picture I showed you um, with the tight end wing. We're gonna short motion him. And for us, um, it's not gonna be a true split zone where he's on this side and comes back this way, but it's the same play for us, it's the same call. He still knows that he's kicking out the backside defensive end, okay? And so whether we short motion him, we have him on this side, we have him, you know, what we call a cross motion, which is on this side of the center. We, we want to do it as many ways as we can so that the defense never gets a beat on one way to do it, right? We can short motion them and go back this way, right? We can short motion them and come back here. It doesn't matter, okay? So we're going to run double slant here. And I believe we have a quick out right here with our grass. Now on this one, it's like a dealer's choice really because the box is good. They have six guys in there and we have six guys to block. But in this game, this guy played a lot of outside leverage with our slot, which left a lot of space in here. And so we just, you know, our quarterback felt like that was a good space right there. And so we just took that easy slant um, in there. All right. This guy didn't score either on this play which is crazy. Again, short motion right here with our wing kick out, but look at the protection with the quarterback. You know, it's just more of a comfortable position for him to be in than having 10 personnel and, you know, leaving a guy. See a good shot here. All right, here's another example. Same formation, three by one. We're going to run what we call a slant return now. So we run out of slants in this game. So it's almost like a pivot route right there for the, for the outside receiver, RZ. He's going to run a slant and then return back. Okay, we're reading this guy here on the outside. How many do they have in the box? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. This guy's going to end up being the sixth. All right. And so based on them adding, we're going to throw that out there to the perimeter. Now our quarterback gets hit here. We typically don't get our quarterback hit. The reason this happens is you're going to see when we go to this tight shot that the running back is way too tight 
and he's way too fast and he kind of bumps into the quarterback. The quarterback has to regather to get the ball out of his hands. All right. If our running back's a little bit wider here and slower, then we're in a better position. And the quarterback doesn't have to kind of reshuffle his hands there like he did. Again, so you just saw us do that same short motion and we went back this way. Now we're doing that short motion and we're going this way. It's key to make sure that the defense never gets a beat on you, right? That's something that I'm always trying to get an eye on as a coordinator is, am I doing the same things over and over again? Or am I making one thing look different multiple times, right? That's really key for me. All right, now we talked about having those wrinkles, okay? One of our first wrinkles is a play that we call wrap. And now with wrap, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fake that same split zone. We're gonna get this guy out to the edge um, to block an overhang. We're gonna have the, the quarterback reading that defensive end, okay? So really, quite honestly, it's gonna be a pull a lot of the time because the defensive end is expecting a split zone block to come. So he's gonna squeeze. So the quarterback's gonna pull. And then now we get out to that edge. This is a huge play for us against a really good football team uh, on fourth and one. Uh, you know, our, our, our head coach said, you want to go for it? This is one of those plays that we saved for this game. Um, and it was it was huge, in, you know, allowing us to get getting down the field and score in this drive. See that one again. Good job blocking there. And again, you know, we got the little scrappy six, you know, five, six receiver here. You know, he's doing what he can, getting flung around, but hey, his man's not making a play. And that's the buy-in that you need to get from your players. We talked about sacrifice, that's sacrifice. That's onus, that's doing your one of 11. I don't care who you are, this guy right here is playing for Liberty or, uh, uh, yeah, Liberty right now, uh, top 25 team in the country, right? He broke three school records for receiving, and he was willing to do that every single game, okay? And I believe that's a huge part of why we were able to win a lot of games is because we have a lot of guys that are bought in. Offensive line, they don't know what's going on. All they do is they're just running zone read, right? They don't even get the same signal that, you know, everyone else gets, you know? Same type of look we had earlier, except for instead of an attached tight end, now we have a, a Y, but this is another 20 personnel type look. Uh, same thing, we're gonna fake that split zone and we're gonna get that, that super back out to the edge um, for our wrap play. Quick motion. Squeeze, we didn't even block that guy really, right? But good job by the quarterback, all right? Now, the next wrinkle, okay? This is another wrinkle for our split zone play. Um, it's now split zone with a flat route, okay? So again, we're gonna, on this one right here, we're actually in 12 personnel, ace wing formation. So we have a, a Y tight end there on the edge. We have a, a, a wing right there, we call him the H our Z and our, and our X, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna actually a cross motion him. So we're gonna end up putting him on this side here and he's gonna come back and get out to the flats. All right, again, another play that looks like something that we do, but except it's a direct counter action to what the defense is trying to do against us okay they're trying to squeeze the heck out of that split zone block let's get out to the edge they want to take their overhang right and play him in the run box there's nobody out there on the edge Here it is again. Now this time, uh, you know, one of the things that we saw in this game was the first time we ran this, this safety, he just screamed down. He was a great player, screamed down 
and made a play on our flat route right here with this guy. So, you know, we just said, you know what, let's just throw a slant behind his head. Let's use his defensive action against him, okay? And so what you're going to see here now is that same play, but except what's going to happen is we're going to run that slant right behind him. And this was a huge play for us in this game where we had three first downs doing this. Because again, we're using his aggressiveness against him. Okay. So next one here is uh, our inside zone with the backside cutoff, right? We talked about that one earlier. So again, nothing's changed. We are still blocking six guys right here in the run box. All right. Um, and we're reading the conflict defenders to each side. All right. So on this one right here, we are in doubles two by two with the tight end. We're going to run zone right. And we're going to go ahead and cut off the C gap here. Not a great block by our tight end. He didn't take a great step, um, but it ended up working out. So our conflict defenders, again, they have one, two, three, four, five, six guys. We can block them. Here's the extra hats, okay? Quarterback sees this guy really aggressive. We get off coverage, and we talk a lot about hip angles with our corners and the routes that we want to uh, run against certain hip angles. Right now, we're going to have a zone hip angle, which basically means that he's turned in towards the quarterback, okay? And he's over and inside, right? Which means that he's on top of the wide out and he's inside leverage. So he cannot defend a quick out, it's impossible. And so that's what you're gonna see here with the RPO. Here we go again. He didn't score either. We got a lot of guys that like to get close to the end zone without getting in for whatever reason. Hopefully we can fix that next year. All right, see the tight shot here. Again, great job by the quarterback. Aggressive, flip the hips, restabilize, ball's gone. All right, same concept. Now we're gonna go ahead and get downfield. This is more of a third level RPO where we're gonna run a bang post we're in 12 personnel again. We're going to run zone left with the backside cutoff, okay? And we're going to run a bang post right here on the backside. So right now, based on how the defense is aligned with us, we can block seven because we have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here's the seven. The extra hat is that guy right there. It's already in the run box. So they're leaving this corner on an island by himself in that one high defense against our best receiver. We'll take that all day. So on this bang post, we're gonna take three outside steps. One, two, three, we're gonna break it. And that angle is gonna be based on the, the space available. We don't overcoach it. If they give us a lot of space in here in the seam area, we're gonna break it. If they play press and you know uh, there's a lot of outside space, we're not gonna try to break inside of him. We're just going to go over the top and let the quarterback throw him dang there like a fade route. Okay. So we want to throw the ball where he's not. And so, you know, that's key for us is giving them those different looks to, to how the corner is going to defend you and where the space is going to be. All right, the next one here is an insert. Okay, that's the one we talked about with the lock here on the backside. And we're taking this Y and inserting him like an ISO type look. But again, how many are we blocking in the box? Six, right? And we're reading these guys right here on the outside. So this is an actual run here. Um, we have a key two right here. Now screen to number two. They're respecting it with how they're playing it, okay? How many guys do we have in there to block? Six. How many guys do they have in the box? Six. Quarterback on this one. We're in the red zone. That's another reason that we might want to think about uh, being more run heavy than pass heavy is because we are in the red zone during this time. These are conversations that we have with the quarterback so he understands 
when do we want to be uh, pass aggressive? When do we want to be run aggressive, right? Down and distance comes into play. Yard line comes into play where we are on the field, things of that nature. And so we're in the red zone here. And this one's no motion. We're in that fullback set. And we're just taking that guy and we're just putting him right up there on that backer, locking the backside in. Running back could have done a better job right there. I think it's blocked up really well. Running back could have done a, done a better job of staying on his feet and doing what we call hug the vertical seam. What we mean by hug the vertical seam is we are reading this block. I want you to stay tight to this block and away from oncoming defenders, okay? Based on him doing what he's doing, he stumbles and he starts to break wide closer to this defender as opposed to trying to stay tight to the block and then getting vertical. All right, now another wrinkle off of off of off of the same play is a pop off of that same insert. So now what we're gonna do, same type look, we are going to fake that same block and then we're gonna push and get vertical after that. You've obviously got to have the space available there to do this. All right. And this is another one of those wrinkles that we break out as needed. These wrinkle plays will probably call four or five times a year. Some of them may be a little more, but at the end of the day, we call them at the times that we need them because we've been running certain plays and the defense is doing certain things to you know, really take those things away. So again, another big play for us in the red zone. The key on this one is right here, freezing this guy by coming to balance, making him think you're gonna fit and then getting vertical. See that one one more time. One key on this play is run out breaking routes with these guys, right? I just tell the quarterback when we call this, just tag an out breaking route. We can do corner quick out. We can do what we're doing here, quick out with the fade. I wanna pull this guy out of the way, okay? And so we're gonna do things that get him out of there so that we can have all this space right here available to us. This isn't a great look right here, but our camera angle, but you can still see the freeze right there, right? That little, that little stutter where you, you know, kind of come to back, bam, when we get vertical, All right, last one here, same thing. Now we are in 12 personnel again, right? Y tight end, backside H, he's in a wing. He's gonna basically insert and then get vertical, right? We run the same thing where we're gonna lock with that backside tackle. We're gonna take him to insert right here, but we're doing the same thing, but just getting vertical on the pop. All right, guys, so that's it. Um, again, I really, really appreciate the opportunity here. Um, you know, hopefully you guys got something out of that. Um, if you guys need to reach out to me, my contact information is right here. You can hit me up here on Twitter. Uh, my email's there, my, my phone number's there. Um, you know, appreciate you guys that listened in as well. Uh, you guys have a great one.